today we're going to solve a mystery, or perhaps we won't. Hi, welcome to Storage of Art. My name is Karel Heidekoper, and today we're going to have a look at this lovely little painting by Jan Steen. He was, of course, a Dutch painter of the 17th century, and this particular painting you can find in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. It is tiny, by the way, it's only about this big. But before we get into it, I need to remind you of the important things. That is, you could, of course, subscribe to this channel. You do that by clicking on a button below this video, and when you do that, a little bell icon appears. You can click that as well, and then you get notifications any time I post new videos. You could, of course, consider giving me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. That's much appreciated. And leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about these videos. Um, you could even suggest stuff that you would like me to talk about in, a, in another video. And um, you might even share this video with other people you think might be interested in it. And that would really help me grow this channel. And it would be nice, of course, to have people join in our discussions. Because what we're doing here, of course, is talk about the important stuff in life. We, or I, discuss art here, and that deals with life, love, death, afterlife, religion, all of those things, the big questions in life. And today is no exception. Today we're going to answer an age-old question where people have been pondering on for centuries. And that is, is she getting dressed or undressed? Because it's not really clear when you look at this picture. We see this young woman sitting on the edge of her bed and she's manipulating her stocking. But what is she doing with it? Is she pulling it up or is she pulling it down? Her hand seems to suggest that she's pulling it up. But then there's an imprint on her upper cuff and that suggests that she has been wearing it all day and she's taking it off. By the way, the string that she holds in the other hand is in Dutch called a kousband. And I suppose it translates to a garter. It's sort of a piece of string that you tie around your upper calf to hold your stockings up. This was all, of course, before garments were elastic. So if you didn't do that, your socks would just fall down. So we see her both pulling her stockings up. And at the same time, it looks as though she's worn them all day already. So maybe there's some hints in the rest of the room. There's, of course, this dog that has fallen asleep on her pillow. Is it tired after a long day and is it simply going to bed? Or is it a lazy dog that doesn't get up in the morning and has chosen to take advantage of the warm pillow where she is just laying and just curls up there for a nice morning nap? Now, I know my dog would never do that. She's up before I am. She tries to get me out of bed because she wants to go for a walk. But of course, I can't speak for all dogs. But it does tell us that the dog is really no help in determining whether she is getting up or if she's going to bed. But then there's also the chamber pot, and if we look closely, we can see that it has been used. So perhaps that gives us an answer. You see, the idea of a chamber pot is that you use it during the night and you empty it in the morning. So in that case, clearly she's getting up out of bed and she just hasn't had the chance to empty it yet. But then there's another possibility, and that is that she might be going to bed during the day and getting up again. I mean, she might be the kind of person who gets in and out of bed a lot. That is, she could be someone that takes a lot of naps during the day, and that would make her lazy. But it would account for the fact that she's pulling up her stocking while her leg still has the imprint on it. And being lazy would also account for the fact that the, her chamber pot is not empty yet. And laziness is the sort of thing that the dog seems to suggest as well. But then there's the possibility that she gets in and out of bed in a more professional way. That is, that she is a prostitute. And this has been suggested by some people because of the fact that her stockings are red. Because there's this story that in the 17th century, prostitutes would wear red stockings. Now, it is, of course, fun to speculate and think that something erotic is going on. But there's a little problem with that. We have very limited evidence that prostitutes actually wore red socks and that all prostitutes would wear red socks. And we're absolutely certain that not only prostitutes wore red socks, other people did as well. For instance, if we look at this painting, it's by Johan van Swieten, and here we see a painter in his studio. He's looking for inspiration by playing music. But clearly he's wearing red stockings, and clearly he's not a prostitute. 
And although this is a completely different situation, it proves that red stockings by themselves don't mean anything. By the way, you, you can see how these garters work, because he's wearing them. But if we turn back to our painting, there's definitely an erotic sense to it, because, because of the way she crosses her legs, because it affords us a look up her legs, up her skirt, far further than would be proper. So much so, in fact, that in the 18th century they actually painted an underskirt there to cover her up, but that has been removed during the 20th century. Now you might wonder if a painter would portray prostitutes, if that is a proper subject for paintings. And the simple answer is, yeah, sure. It's actually a pretty common theme in 17th century Dutch painting. There are brothel scenes everywhere. They all started with the depictions of the prodigal son. You know, that biblical parable about a son who squanders his inheritance in brothels and then goes back to his father and repents. And that was a very popular scene to depict. That is not the repenting, but the squandering his money in brothels. This is one from earlier in the century. You can see that this is not just some young lady playing a lute and getting to know a young gentleman. Instead, they are about to make a business transaction. And you can see that because if you look closely, you can see he's holding up a coin. And there's an older woman who stands to the side and is pointing towards the coin. And she is what the Dutch call a koppelaarster. Literally, that would be a matchmaker, but it's more close to the word uh, madame, I suppose. Now, these scenes were very popular earlier in the 17th century, and in the second half of the 17th century, they were made in more subtle ways. They were much less obvious, so you, now you had to figure out what was going on. For instance, this is a painting by Frans van Mieris the Elder, where we see a girl who is filling the glass of a soldier while they exchange a look. It's made clear that she's not just his sister or he's visiting in a normal way by the fact that there's a man asleep on the table right behind her. Also, there's a couple just beyond the door who are probably further along in their transaction. And we can see that in the upper floors there are bedrooms that are being cleaned. That's just to remind us that there are beds nearby. And if we still don't get the picture, we can always see the little dogs at the bottom of the painting. And the Dutch loved these small, precisely painted pictures with slightly ambiguous scenes, precisely because these are very good conversation starters. So, back to our woman and her stockings. Have you noticed that she's wearing a headscarf? Obviously, it's not intended to be a hijab. Islam really wasn't a religion of the land. No, it's simply a headscarf, and lots of women wore them, and actually did well into the 20th century. Often people have said that these are signs of piety or modesty, which, of course, would be very opposite to her being a prostitute. But these scarves had nothing to do with modesty. And we can see that if we compare it to another painting by Jan Steen. This is a scene where a girl has to choose between two lovers. On the one hand, there's the young man, whom she does seem to like. I mean, she has her arm over his leg. And on the other hand, there's the older man who clearly has money. So she has to make a very unpious choice between the wealth of an older man or the love with a younger man. The old man holds up a ring in front of her face and points to his money. And the young man has a flute that he's offering her to play with. He's even holding it between his own legs. It's not a very subtle picture. Now, we can get a little bit more information, perhaps, if we compare it to another version that Jan Steen made. This one is in the British Royal Collection. We see a similar girl sitting on a bed that's in a room that, in this case, is much more well lit. And she's doing the same thing, but in a slightly different way. She seems to be pulling up her stockings, but the dents in her legs are less pronounced. We can't see inside her chamber pot, so we don't know if it's full or empty. But there are some other things that we can see in this picture. For instance, we see that it is daytime. We can see that from the lighting, but also from the candle that's on her nightstand. It is out because she doesn't need it. But also there's a box of jewelry there. And when we look slightly further down to the foreground, we see that in her doorway, for some reason, there's a lute and a book of music. And the lute, for some reason, is leaning on a skull. Now, that's a strange thing to find. I mean, a box of jewelry in a bedroom, that's fine. People have those. And there's really only one thing to associate skulls with, and that is death. Now, that's another theme that often appears in 17th century art, that people remind us that life is short and that when we die, we cannot take our luxuries with us. So we have to take care of 
not just our bodies and our wealth, but mostly of our souls. It's called a vanitas theme, and it's quite common. Now, Jan Steen often made paintings in various versions. Once he made a composition that worked, he or painters in a studio would simply make more of them in all kinds of variations. Because you have to understand this is a business, so if you have something that sells, you make more of them. A while ago I made a video about love and sex and pregnancies in painting in the 17th century, and Jan Steen made that theme by the dozens. But in this case, even though there are many similarities between this painting and this one, they are decidedly different, because in this one there is no skull and there's no jewelry. It's a much simpler setting, and therefore much more subtle, because it's not as clear what the intention is. It still comes down to, is she putting her stocking on, or is she taking it off? Now, the whole idea, of course, is that it's purposefully ambiguous. It's a conversation starter. So let's have that conversation. What do you think? Is she getting dressed, or is she getting undressed? Maybe it would be best if you come to Amsterdam and have a look at it for yourself. It's in the Rijksmuseum, and if you do, you might want to let me know that you're coming because you might be able to book me for a tour or come to one of my lectures. In any case, uh, I'd like to remind you that you could, of course, like this video, subscribe to the channel, but mostly I would like to thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon.